So we're going to introduce our judges now. Our first judge is Maxie Golightly. If we could have her up. She grew up on a commune, playing in the sunshine, eating the food we grew, and playing music. She started a band with some of her friends called Coco's Rainbow Machine of Love. And we had the grooviest jams around. They wrote songs like Love Bug on a Rug of Flowers of Peace and Psychedelic Ride to Rainbow Town. I've heard you can find a killer 49 version of our best song, Hey Dude, Don't Kill My Buzz. How groovy is that? But she left the band when they decided to sell out and sign a record deal way too corporate. She chose to live her life without things like telephones, expensive threads, jobs, or soap dragging her down. <laughs> she just lives love in her uh, lives life in her band, going to the best music festivals on the planet, spreading peace and love. She enjoys life as it comes her way. She heard about the beaver pageant up in the um, Crawdad Mountain Jam, and it just blew her mind. Beavers! Whoa, she can dig it. She needs some place to crash tonight, by the way. <laughs> Okay. Our next judge is Woody Van Pelt. Woody. In the summer of 1969, through the waning hours of the Woodstock Music and Art Fair, two uninvited guests crashed the backstage area. Kitty Van Pelt, an exhausted, inebriated, incoherent, and very pregnant uh, young uh, groupie, Ar young Arlo Guthrie groupie, threw herself upon her idol, exclaimed, You're the daddy! Gave birth in his arms and disappeared into the crowd. And here we have Woody as a result. From a young age, Woody knew it was his fate to be a rock and roller, and thus devoted himself to the study of the rock and roll lifestyle. He quickly became adept at the roll and tope, the shroom and zoom, and the sip and trip. However, it became increasingly clear to him that his true calling was his appreciation for nature. Therefore, Woody would focus on the one area of the rock and roll lifestyle that gave him peace of mind, the pursuit of beaver. Over the past 20 years, Woody has maintained both his rocking lifestyle and his chasing of beaver. Rocky, a throwback if there ever was one, huh? And, <laughs> yes, Woody, sorry about that. <laughs> and um, he's practicing a catch and release program, as always. Woody was recently awarded a grant from the Ellerby Creek Watershed Fund for his proposed pursuit and study of the Norwegian white beaver and the Brazilian bald beaver. Woody Van Pelt, a true lover of beaver. Aren't we all? Our next judge is to beave or not to beave. To beave as he is known to his lodge posse, was born in Buffalo, New York, back in the before time when the Beaver Nation could speak. He learned the language of the upright people and got his first job in commercial radio at the age of 19. He moved to Iowa, a place known to the Beaver people as the land where nothing happens. And it never did. His time in Des Moines taught him a valuable lesson, never live in a city that starts with duh. <laughs> he moved with his wife and 18th month old, month old daughter to Washington, D.C. to work for NPR. Public Radio was under court order to improve its beaver hiring record. Beaver discrimination was rampant at the time, and well-spoken beavers like Two Beef had to fight negative stereotypes such as beavers can't talk, and they make good reporters, but they eat the furniture. He now lodges in Durham with his wife. He hosts a radio show called The State of Things on North Carolina Public Radio, WUNC. He loves talking to the upright people who live here and says furniture is really tasty. Thank you. Thank you, upright people. I want to say that uh, glamour has been the hallmark of this event for the past five years. We've decided to upgrade the literary quality now, and so To Beaver Not To Beaver has brought actually, this is the beaver pen that Shakespeare uh, used to write his most famous plays, Macbeth, uh, Beavlet, and A Midsummer Night's Dam. We don't know about the, the Merry Beeves of Windsor. There's a controversy, we won't get into that tonight, but I do want to read the soliloquy that he wrote with this very beaver quill, uh, and I'll read it to you now. 
To beave or not to beave, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to build with sticks and mud, or to murder the varmints with dynamite that they may build no more. To build, perhaps, perchance to gnaw. Aye, there's the rub. For in that dam doth lie an undiscovered country from whose bourn no traveler returns, unless he wears a snorkel, which would make him conspicuous to the beavers. And he would run from their lodge as the beavers pelted him with the spiny parts of long dead fish. Thus, codfins doth make cowards of us all. Damn those who would oppose our eager woodland friends because their lodges are here and there, unruly, unexpected, checkered threats to urban sprawl. They who cry, out, out, spot, damn. <laughs> How easily I change from Hamlet to Macbeth. Easier still to say, give me beaver, give me death. Thank you. Thank you, to be. Have you no shame is really all I can say. <laughs> okay, welcome uh, to Beaver Not to Beef. And we have uh, Doc Beaver up next. Doc Beaver, some of you may recognize him. He knows a healthy beaver when he sees one. Doc Beaver was born on the banks of the Potomac River in the Chesapeake watershed. Mom and Dad Beaver made him the night Soviet Beaver Khrushchev was pounding his shoe at the United Nations on the East River. As a young pup, Doc Beaver paddled up many rivers including the Nile, the Yangtze, the Seine, the St. Lawrence, and the Congo. Today, he lives in a wonderful pond called Old West Beaver in the Ellerbee watershed. Doc has worked with other beavers to stop the asphalt industry from building stinky asphalt plants near beaver wetlands, the DOT from building stinky Eno loop over beaver lodges, and Devil University from building lots of stinky stores next to the little local beaver shops. Yeah. Next thing is to stop the billboard industry from erecting big, bright, stinky, electronic billboards flashing 10,000 ads a day along the Beaver Bowl City's busiest byways. Welcome, Doc Beaver. Next judge is Woody L. He's doing his best to improve lives for our local beavers by starting Beaver Central Market. Discerning beavers know that some of our finest woods grow in our area, but far too often beavers in our community have to settle for substandard trees and shrubs. In the spirit of Woodstick, Woody wants beavers to believe in their fellow kind and work through co cooperative principles to make sure that all have access to the finest local wood and the healthiest local brush. Rumors have reached Woody's ears that his judging can be influenced with the bribes or suck-ups. Woody notes that some might try to sway him by promoting his favorite cause in creative ways and will make every effort to notice these. Woody promises that among all the contestants in the pageant, after viewing their performances, he will pick one of them. Next up is Beeve Purdue. Please welcome Beeve Purdue. When Beeve Purdue took office in January, she was shocked to discover what a sorry state our NC Beavers are in after years of Republican, or Republican neglect. Heck, seems like a Republican wouldn't know what to do with a beaver if one walked up and slapped him in the face with her tail, said the newly wetted Beeve. Since being elected as the first beaver governor in North Carolina, she has been hard at work on the beaver stimulus package. A two-pronged effort to rescue beaverdom from those forces that seek to crush us under the wheel of progress. Said Beaver in a recent interview, first, we are launching our Build a Better Beaver program, aimed at giving beavers the state funding needed to rebuild their wetlands. 
Just as important, however, is this administration.